PK is imploding, and the quickest way they can prove us wrong is by paying the employees, the contractors, the suppliers, and the governments, yes, to whom they owe money. EK has a liquidity problem, one employee told us. All the money is tied up in stock. We just don't have the liquid funds to pay people out, even though we have the money, another said. A supplier to EK told us that EK Waterblocks currently owes them five figures and is almost half a year overdue on payment. Another party told us that they have an invoice outstanding for services rendered that's been sitting for four to five months now, unpaid. My main problem is that they are clearly trying to hide how they operate and treat people. This is a problem, and as I said in my post, there's no place for this kind of treatment of people in the industry, or any industry. They not only have a liquidity issue, but they also have a morals and standards issue, in my opinion. Dan Henderson, the whistleblower who is willing to go on the record to bring this to light. Another employee told us that, quote, Vendor relations were screwed by late bills causing our customers to wait forever for parts that would finish their orders. Inventory too often was almost completely wrong. That was for the pre-built side of the business, which sounds awfully familiar. Oh, and there's the re-roll. We brought you this investigative report with our new stainless steel copper-plated mule mugs on store.gamersaccess.net. Our investigative journalism on sensitive topics like this bears greater risk and attracts legal attention, but it brings to light issues within the industry that affect people beyond just the hardware. To support our commitment to no-nonsense, raw reporting on these important matters, please grab one of our brand new thermal conductivity mule mugs on the store. Some of you have been asking for us to bring this item back for years now, and it's finally here with a new finish and approach. The mugs have a thermal conductivity formula laser etched into them, representing approximately the thermal conductivity of copper at 26.85 degrees Celsius or so, depending on the thickness of the measurement conditions of the tools and you know, this is getting carried away. But the point is, it's a fun and nerdy thermal conductivity representation, and it's a great option for cold drinks, which is perfect for EK's burns. They're in stock and shipping now, and we didn't even melt down EK's copper supply to make them. We wanted to verify what was meant by vendor relations being, quote, screwed. And so we contacted some of EK's larger industry partners, and one had a system on loan from EK. They had been waiting for a payment upwards of six figures for an agreement that was being finalized. Uh, and they told us this, quote, once they received their PCs back from a loan, we were ghosted and never spoken to again. And based on our investigative reporting today, we believe that EK Waterblocks is behaving in an irresponsible and negligent way in the way it's handling its money, its payments, its suppliers, and its own personnel who are performing work, in some cases, unpaid for months at a time. Uh, additionally, EK is unnecessarily subjecting these parties to potential financial hardship. When EK learned that we were starting to talk to their suppliers, their employees, their contractors, and their former suppliers, employees, and contractors, the company panicked. It immediately, as we understand it, set forth to scramble to try and get payments out the door before we could put this piece together and finalize it. We'd assume so that they have the cover fire to say, no, they have been paid. It also sent out at least two legal letters, one of which was a cease and desist sent to a former staff member who began expressing desire to be paid for work which the staff member believed had been until now, and we'll see in a few days, unpaid. Uh, EK is cease and desist said the following, quote, we demand that you immediately cease and desist and comply with the following. One, immediately delete and remove the disputed LinkedIn post attached in exhibit B. Two, tender payment of 70,000 euros by April 25th, which EK is entitled to receive as a contractual penalty for your breach of the NDA. And eventually, five, cease and desist from making defamatory statements about EK. Unfortunately for EK, the individual who initially posted the complaints is not the only one who has had complaints, and we've been able to dig up a lot of those. EK has a liquidity problem. It's making its suppliers and its staff members the ones to bear the burden of that liquidity problem. And in our search, we also found that EK presently owes and is delinquent on its franchise tax in the state of Texas, where it previously operated. It operated EK Cooling Solutions there, which was an EK US-based subsidiary 
to EK headquarters based in Slovenia. The company moved these operations to a different company in California, uh, but they still owe taxes in Texas from what we can see in public record. And they've kind of confirmed that too. The decision of EK to attempt to silence one source of this criticism, we think, is a smoking gun to greater problems. And for EK's lawyers, who are inevitably watching this video, uh, I have a message for you as well. We have everything, and we would encourage you to play nice and peacefully with the people to whom you owe money. Uh, do the right thing and rectify the issues. Pay your people, apologize, and try to move forward to making the company the company that it should be and that it claims to be, rather than trying to go this path, because it may yet be recoverable, but that potential depends on the actions in the next few days. Here's the story. Following a public LinkedIn post from EK former contractor Dan Henderson, Gamers Nexus immediately began an investigation digging into some of the allegations. These included non-payment, among others, and uh, Henderson claimed that he went unpaid for months. Likewise, Gamers Nexus has received a number of communications from current business partners and former ones of EK and uh, current and former employees and contractors. We've spent the last two days vetting these claims. We have, at the time of filming, at least 13 different parties that have commented to us and provided evidence. This includes business partners, contractors, uh, and others. And we have screenshots, documents, PDFs, legal filings, inventory numbers, cost, and more. And so we've done that vetting, heard stories similar uh, to identical to what Henderson posted from multiple other individuals, former and current. And so that's where we start with some facts and some claims for all of this. Uh, Dan Henderson posted the following on LinkedIn, quote, I left EK almost a month ago now. The past year with EK Waterblocks has been one of the most stressful times in my career. From losing all leadership and effectively running U.S. operations by myself with no budget, what I could only describe as a skeleton crew, albeit full of amazing humans, and having all resources slowly taken away until the business can do nothing but fail, to not being paid for almost four months, strong-armed and bullied into signing a new contract through fear of losing my job and also financial ruin. In our research, we mostly dug into the non-payment, and this is one where we, we can't give exact precise amounts, dollar amounts, exact and precise timelines because it would reveal our informants potentially. So we've intentionally obfuscated some of this information just again to let EK's lawyers know you're wasting your time. Here's what we have. Multiple former employees claim that EK or its subsidiaries would shave overtime hours, decreasing the amount paid to personnel after the work has been performed. This is illegal, if it's true, and we've received this report from four former staff now. Multiple current staff state that EK has not paid them for up to three to four months. Multiple current and former staff have stated that EK fails to communicate when payments will arrive and instead operates in silence, making it difficult for them to plan purchases, living expenses, rent, or mortgage payments. The Secretary of State's office in the state of Texas informed Gamers Nexus on a call that EK Cooling Solutions currently has a tax forfeiture status. EK has laid off Texas-based staff and warehouse and moved some of those operations under a different company. After informing Texas staff of the layoff date, EK allegedly continued to move that date closer. Employees eventually showed up to what we are told were locked doors, with EK moving the date in sooner. EK owes a supplier that we spoke with a five-figure sum and is past due by three to six months. EK has informed a supplier that it may not be able to make lump sum payments for reasons we assume to be liquidity challenges. EK owed some employees back pay for unpaid raises that accumulated for nearly a year, and we've been informed that EK is scrambling to issue payments to staff today pursuant to our investigation. Let's discuss how this happened. Everything EK makes is expensive. If you check their web store right now, they have 230 water block SKUs, 40 SKUs of kits, 85 reservoir models, 40 pump SKUs, 73 radiator options, and 212 miscellaneous accessory options. Many of these are expensive. We learned that one major retailer has only sold two units in six months of EK's Z790 Maximus block. Because EK's inventory is so specialized, it ends up in warehouses. It takes a ton of space. It's EK's own, but also those of its distributors and its retailers. It ends up stuck with products because it needs to ensure compatibility with specific video card SKUs 
down to the board partner model in many instances, and that's a hard thing to accommodate at any kind of scale. But EK now is stuck in what appears to be a purchasing death loop. EK, we're told, in order to stay cash flow positive, needs to continually order product, which it is having difficulty selling. It requires minimum order quantities beyond what EK might immediately be able to sell. However, if they want them at all, they have to hit the MOQs or the minimum order quantities. This causes EK to get stuck in a cycle. It has to order because it needs inventory to make money to keep up with dues. But if it orders, it has to over order. It has too much inventory. All of its money is tied up in inventory. And that cycle seems to repeat. And that means that it doesn't have the liquidity it needs, apparently, to pay something as small as a five figure invoice. When you're talking business to business and a company that has millions of dollars in inventory of product, a five figure amount is not very much. And that is concerning. That's ignoring the staff wages, which are indisputably much lower. And one of EK's major retailers told us that its revenue total for EK through that retailer had fallen at 32% in one year. And likewise, its individual item sales dropped by 20 to 25% when looking at unit count. Unfortunately for EK though, despite it being established for so long, our understanding is that it does not own all of its manufacturing facilities and it instead is still outsourcing manufacturing to other companies. Uh, and that means it has to play by the rules of those companies, including hitting MOQ. Whereas many of its competitors do have their own equipment. And as a result, they're able to spin it up for lower production runs, which means less cost in products that is not moving. Inventory isn't the only reason that EK has financial problems. The company also has a culture of financial mismanagement that seems to operate at a higher level. The model is unsustainable, and that's why EK created its fluid gaming PCs and its workstation systems previously. These were supposed to help EK stabilize in cash flow by offering something outside of just selling individual components for open loop liquid cooling. EK Cooling Solutions would generate profits in the US and then EK headquarters continued to operate in Slovenia and it would draw those profits as we understand it to pay down its own projects and to attempt expansion at the headquarters level. On the surface of things, this sounds fairly normal for how two companies might operate when one is a subsidiary of the other. However, the cycle stymied growth in the US office and as a result, it was left with little budget which it could use to try and expand. The problem here is that in speaking with teams across the company, we observed a situation of open hostility between the two branches of EK. This is beyond a friendly competition. This is a, they are borderline actively hating each other. The US office viewed the HQ office in Slovenia as untrusting and overbearing, referring to members of HQ as slimy while the headquarters office viewed the US office as incompetent. One employee told us that headquarters referred to the US office as, quote, lazy idiots. This is not productive, and it will never be possible for a company in this position to right itself while it entertains and enables and allows such behavior internally. That has to be addressed at levels that are beyond the finances. Uh, it requires a paradigm shift. People from both branches in discussion with them accused the other branch of stealing from EK. We don't know who or if any of them are correct in that. The fact that they both accuse the other branch of theft though is concerning within the same company. One former staff member with whom we spoke said, quote, Swift Tech in California was given the responsibilities of producing the products of EK Fluid Works and eventually EK Fluid Gaming. This is removing them from EK's own cooling solutions. The individual continued and said, March 1st, management stood at the door saying high value items were reported missing. So you will be escorted to your desk to grab any belongings left behind and law enforcement may be required to search your homes for said missing items. We were able to find one other individual who verified similar statements. The individual said this never actually happened. They loved threatening us. The former employee continued and said it was EK Slovenians versus EK Americans and their mole, the office manager. You never knew who to trust with a small group of management in between it all. Another EKUS employee said this, 
quote, every time we made a sale, a member of the finance team in HQ Slovenia would go into the EKCS branch in the US and take profit from that sale. We had no budget as a result, but we were blamed for not hitting targets, end quote. The office manager said EKHQ suspected everyone under them of stealing when we always suspected them of doing it. Yet another US-based former employee told us this, quote, HQ also liked to have us pay for work things up front out of our own pocket, claiming that we would be reimbursed. However, that rarely happened. I only know of one time I was actually reimbursed and I had to print it up every day for a month. They also tried claiming it was already done and that I needed to trust them. It wasn't taken care of. I then had my job threatened multiple times. The two branches would fight over inventory with the team responsible for building the pre-built gaming PCs telling us that they would often have to buy EK's own components from different suppliers because purchasing from EKHQ directly would sometimes mean retail prices to EKCS and in order to hit targets and hit profit margin expectations, they needed to get those parts cheaper and they told us they would instead buy them from other partners within the channel. Now this in combination with some of the other commentary on money movement and the lack of payment meant we consulted with an attorney and the attorney told us that uh, a company might do this as a tactic or a common tactic to reduce the taxable profits in one entity by extracting them as cost to that entity and expense, in other words, from the purchasing of higher cost goods, moving that money, the profit, into the other entity, which is taxed by a different code and a different region, uh, or where they might have different debts and expenses with which they can mark those profits against to try and further uh, reconcile and, and reduce taxable income. That's, uh, again, something an attorney told us is a possible tactic depending on the region in which all of this is happening. Additionally, there were disputes over commission. We've seen some of the EK contracts with its own personnel, uh, and they promised staff a commission of sales in some instances, but then annexed those parts of the contract by claiming that they probably should be changed. There was some consideration offered in exchange for annexing those, but given the power position of EK and the uh, precipitous or teetering position of potential staff members where their option is refuse and be fired <laughs> or take the change and get less money, meaning reduced or no commission, then it does seem perhaps unfair in the way that EK may have navigated that situation. And again, we have documentation for all of that. But let's talk more about what's going on at EK and if it can change or rectify any of this. For EK's part, HQ's actions speak louder than its words. In February of 2024, just a few months ago, I received a message from our friend Leo of Kit Guru, which uh, he's an excellent reviewer, and he asked if we'd heard of layoffs at EK. At the time, I hadn't. I said no. But he was onto something because we've now more recently found that uh, the company sacked its CEO around that time, it appears, sometime uh, early this year or maybe late th last year. That was Matthias Kirch, who was put in place by founder and namesake Eddie Koenig. Now, the CEO was put in place to handle the finances and the business administration side of the business. From what we understand, that was not an aspect that Koenig wanted to handle. In February, Kirch was removed and Koenig assumed intermediary responsibilities of the business administration, from what we understand, and we're told that the major shakeup happened after the founder saw the state his company ended up in. The question is whether it's too late to correct course, as the founder also appointed that CEO. So we have to question whether he's capable of identifying the deep cultural problems that appear to be present within the company, and that's outside of just the payment problems. In order to pay its dues, two sources familiar with EK's internal goings on right now have told us that EK is considering selling one of its buildings. This could potentially be a leaseback situation or just an instant influx of cash to try and deal with some of the debts. Some of the suppliers we spoke with said that they are actually changing their terms of agreement with EK, and that means EK will have to move to a potentially cash method or an upfront method rather than effectively a line of credit or at least uh, a net 30, net 60, whatever it may have been previously. Likewise, from speaking with EK's staff, current and former, uh, the company would need to immediately begin communicating what it expects in terms of when it can make payments to its partners and its staff. EK, if you're watching, instead of being pissed off, uh, what I would suggest just 
talking openly here is you listen to them because every single person who currently works there with whom we spoke all voiced the same thing, which was, I would really like it if they'd tell me there's a delay and when it will end rather than operating in silence. A company's supplier is getting screwed. It's not great, but a company can probably soak an $80,000 debt if it's dealing on the order of millions of dollars in purchasing. Cost of doing business. They sucked. They didn't pay us. We'll learn from that and not make that mistake again. Individuals, though, who have no alternative source of income other than the company, that's where it should be taken extremely seriously. Uh, and communication is key for that. Now, we've been told by multiple staff that they are, the staff that is, are struggling with things like mortgage payments, rent, being able to plan their lives outside of work. And that is because of exceptionally late payments. And we are talking here on the scale of months. The common number I was hearing was two to four months for most of these individuals. EK, interestingly, just sent us a media invite to check out its booth at Computex 2024. And <laughs> maybe in uh, a, a moment of complete unawareness, it is inviting the media to visit its extremely expensive, probably six-figure cost booth at a trade show so that it can try to generate enough business and drum it up with business-to-business -business partners in the industry so it can then pay the people it owes money, uh, if, if EK even pays the people who run Computex for the booth. And we have one of our own experiences. I've shared this in the past. There's actually two. Uh, I've shared this in the past. I don't remember if I named EK in it, but I'm okay doing that now. But the one that I actually care about uh, and that still bothers me today and that I still find gross is years ago when we were visiting EK's booth at a trade show and we covered their product. Basically, it was set up. All the stuff was on the table. We thought it was cool. We said, hey, let's make a news video. And we shot the product and talked about the news from EK. After that, the, uh, one of the EK representatives in the booth sort of nudged me and said, how much? And I said, what? And he said, how much? Like 2,000? And uh, I said, no, this, we don't, no. Like we don't charge to cover the booth. The way it works, my job is to talk about news and things that are cool in computer hardware. It is my job to go to the booth or go to the suite, as it was, and determine if I think it's interesting. We walk out all the time. If it sucks, if it's not interesting, sometimes we're polite about it. We say, yeah, we'll cover it later, and then never do. And the reason we can do that is because we have the freedom to do it, because we don't charge to cover a booth at a show. We sell advertising as pre-rolls. You're all familiar with it. Uh, this video is going to be a GN store ad, but in that same spot, we'll have an advertisement. That's an external different thing. What EK was asking was if they could give us two grand, and this was asked after we shot the video. This wasn't like before. A deal like that, if it's going to happen at all, which we vehemently disagree with, paid coverage. Uh, it's different from ads. I, I think it's unacceptable, uh, but it's a different story. If that kind of deal is going to be struck, it needs to happen in advance. Doing it on the side is very shady and very off-putting. Uh, and the conversation didn't stop there either. So he had said uh, $2,000. I said, yeah, I explained we don't do that. He said, you have a donate button, right? And I again said, what? On the store at the bottom. You have a donate button. We'll donate money. And I made it extremely clear, absolutely not. Do not give us any money. One, we're going to refund it. Two, fuck you. I said, no, that's making me uncomfortable. That's not how we operate. And I found it very concerning, uh, it made it clear I was serious, this isn't a joke, explained why it mattered so much, and it seemed like a complete lack of understanding how that is unethical and how that's a breach of trust and how now that I've been to that booth, I have to be concerned about if some slime ball goes to that booth and does accept cash on the side that isn't disclosed that I'm going to be implicated because I was also at that booth and I also worked with that company. That's what we explained to EK and that's what pissed me off years ago. We made it clear to them, they changed our representative and everything seemed to be okay after that. Seeing this news brings that back to me and so that was our story with it. Now, I don't want that to overshadow the rest of this because uh, one, it's old news and two, we're just fine and I have nothing to be 
other than offended, I have nothing really that was taken from me. I, I'm not someone who has provided work and had my hours adjusted after the work was rendered, after the work was requested, and been underpaid, as some of these, uh, actually I think it was four, uh, former staff claimed. So the scale of how it's affected us, uh, I want to be very clear, much lower than who we're really concerned about, which is the other people affected in this story. And the fact that suppliers got hurt, that sucks. But it's really the individuals that matter here. So back to the staff. EK has a consistent and patterned behavior from everything, everything we've seen uh, that we believe to be intentional. That's what I think. And it does not communicate payment delays. Uh, this would allow people to instead seek other employment. It also uh, withheld promotional raise pay from what we understand until it was pressured by the person to whom uh, that raise was promised and they eventually had to be pressured to give back pay. Now, further, we've been told that EK is not timely in reimbursing trip expenses, uh, if at all. And these are all heavy claims that paint a picture of insolvency or liquidity problems uh, at best or fraud at worst. And uh, at this time, we have reason to believe that EK or its managers acted in a way in which someone there in a position of power appears to have been uh, possibly shorting employees on overtime payment. And we had initially sought comments from EK only because we had seen Dan Henderson's post, and at that time, nothing else. Hadn't spoken to anyone, it was only that post. And we sent this email to EK after we started talking to some people. Here's uh, what we said, it's on the screen. It's basically, we had received enough supporting evidence of a potential cover-up, we had learned of their uh, legal aggressions, and ironically, uh, after we told them, you know what, we don't want to comment anymore because you fall under our policies that we follow for contact and outreach where we believe you are going to try and mislead us and you are going to try and twist the story, EK. And that means we don't want any further commentary. We have enough. The actions speak loud enough. Even still, after we sent that message, EK uh, sent one that maybe unintentionally confirmed some of our findings that we hadn't yet finalized, such as its tax delinquency in Texas. Quote, Hi Steve, rest assured that EK is not forcing any of our employees to keep quiet. Responding to your emails is their prerogative. I'd like to present Exhibit A, the cease and desist. But moving on, they said, quote, however, we would like to emphasize once more that publicly commenting on bilateral matters does not benefit any party, and we, therefore, prefer to resolve dissents privately. Yes, we have some unpaid bills, but we're talking about a regular business operation where, unfortunately, some payments are postponed. Extremely strong gaslighting here, by the way. The comment continued and said, quote, the company's top priority is paying our employees' salaries. They continued, we have around 200 employees who support their families by EK making regular payments. The company has always settled its debts and never intended not to pay some, never, never intended not to pay some postponed bills. All outstanding bills will be dealt with, just like our taxes in the state of Texas. EK plans to remain in business and fully get back on its feet, hence the upcoming presence at Computex 2024 for the first time with our own booth. So, apparently time to celebrate. And again, that expense in extremely poor taste right now, especially to start uh, promoting. It continued, there are always two sides to the story. As for Daniel Henderson and his outreach on social media, we are sorry about his reaction. Some reasons for his vendetta are likely linked to previous management figures with whom we parted ways in February 2024. The new management distances itself from the practices of the past. And to that I say, then you apologize. EK apologizes. If the statement is, he had problems with our management, we fired the management after we got rid of him, that's still your problem. Because <laughs> the, the manager who worked for EK was the one who was creating the situation that's being described in the response from EK in this email. Insane, completely unacceptable, tone deaf. Continued, quote, we do not want to comment further because we have not yet established all the facts of the situation. The investigation's underway. However, Daniel's accusations do not reflect the entire story and we really don't see how its public exposure can contribute to an amicable solution. Ultimately, any offense taken at us is solely between Daniel and EK. I hope this clears this up. Again, uh, not mentioned here is the fact that 
around a dozen or so entities, we spoke with people and companies, uh, are in positions that are likewise affected by some of the actions described herein. And we didn't even go over some of the other ones, but I do have documents for those two, and EK knows to what I am referring. Uh, it's not just two parties. That is a lie. It's more than EK and Daniel Henderson. Uh, if it's not a lie, it is profound ignorance. And evidence suggests that we believe there is a company culture, or at least a financial controller culture within the company, those who manage how the money is spent, to whom debts are paid, and what order. There is something there that from the top down, in the guidance of how this company operates, that suggests this is the way it is intended to operate. And our own experiences do kind of line up with some of this stuff. Uh, but we didn't have enough to, to bring it really any further at that time. So it's not distant from Noah Katz asking his employees for investment for artesian builds. That was one of the things that happened when the doors were closing. He asked his employees, the CEO of Artesian Builds, the company that rocketed to success doing 20 million a year, asked his own staff to invest money in the company to try and save it from his own decisions. And EK, you're not better. That's what's happening here because short of actually literally asking the staff and the suppliers for investment, EK is instead taking a loan. That's what's happening here. By not paying for months at a time, we'd assume EK is not calculating interest on these payments owed, it is effectively taking a loan. It's borrowing money that it doesn't have to try and fill uh, or tide over between the uh, payments it's receiving from its product sales or its deals or whatever's going on. That's what EK is doing. And, and in that situation, those who are effectively loaning the money are unsecured and probably without interest. And EK, this is bullshit because the, the people we're talking to, first of all, it's not a small amount of people. Uh, and this is only the former staff and employees and whoever else I've happened to connect with in the last 36 hours. A lot of them are people I have never met. Uh, I've been able to cross verify their stories with other people. I've been able to collect evidence. Uh, I've seen enough. And what gets me is for whatever reason, I have heard stories from people I've never met. Uh, and EK actually employs these people or contracts them or in some capacity is supposed to pay or have paid them. And yet for, for some reason, it seems that I feel more empathy for people telling me they can't afford their house, they have to move, they have kids and they have to move, and EK hasn't been paid them. And that's totally unacceptable. It is beyond reproach. I don't think it should be recoverable if EK doesn't immediately resolve this issue. And furthermore, I would like to put this message out uh, for anybody who did work at the Texas office, because I don't know Slovenian law. Uh, I, I know a little bit of how it works in the US. And my message for you all is collect your evidence of non-payment or especially of hours shaving, reducing overtime hours after they were worked. It doesn't matter if they say they were approved or not. If you worked them and they shaved them, then you get money. Like you, the, the, and the money you get is through the legal system at that point. So, you know, I'm not a lawyer. But what I will say is that uh, the Board of Labor takes that incredibly seriously in almost any state, even in right-to-work states. And um, there may be something there because if a company begins to explore retaliatory actions, such as a cease and desist, uh, there start to be multiplier effects on the potential damages. So someone in the comments who maybe is a lawyer can sound off on this. Uh, I think there's instances where treble may apply, and in any case, if, if there has been a good faith effort on your end to get that money, and it has not been provided, uh, I wouldn't shut up and just walk away. I mean, there's, there's options, but and, you know, I, was, I was actually editing the video, and I stopped, 
And I wrote a couple notes, but I had to run down here and film this segment because it went from I'm reporting the facts of the situation to now I'm thinking about what it means. And the thinking about it part was the hard part because it to me, it's how can you do that to people and then turn around with this two-faced bullshit about how much you care about the people you employ or contract while also not paying them for months with, according to everyone we've spoken to, zero communication. And you know, some of the people I've spoken to, I, I feel like they're almost Stockholm syndromed into it. We're like, oh, they say they're gonna, they're gonna pay it eventually, and I hope they just reach out and let me know if there's gonna be a delay. And you know, that's not. You gotta break out of that. But ek, the people who work for you have told me they just want to know if there's going to be a delay. That's easy. So fix it, and we'll see you at Computex. <laughs> I'll be there. I'm going to the, I got the invite. You can't take it. No takes these backsies. Uh, we'll be at the booth bright and early. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. There's going to be more. Um, subscribe to catch follow-ups, but we have normal reviews coming up soon. I'm excited about them. They will be overshadowed by this. Uh, this is important, though. And the reason it's important is, I mean, customers should know. But to me, more importantly, is the people who are affected should get their f***ing money from EK. So that's it. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersaccess.net if you want to support us. Unless you're EK, don't give me a dime. We talked about it. Uh, otherwise, patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help out. And we will have more independent reporting for you soon enough. See you all next time.